Here is your wig maker's disguise. Here is your money. And here is the pistol. Kill if you must, Antony, kill. I'll kill a dozen jailers if need be to set her free. Antony, one more thing. When you have rescued Joanna, bring her back here and I will hide her while you hire Chase to Plymouth. We'll be back before the evening's out. Thank you, friend. Most honorable Judge Kirby. Most honorable. Honorable. I venture thus to write you this urgent note to warn you that the hot blooded young sailor. To earn your favor, I have persuaded the boy to lodge her here tonight at my tonsorial parlor in Fleet Street. If you want her again in your arms, hurry after the night falls. She will be waiting. Waiting. Your obedient, humble servant, Sweeney Todd. Give this to Judge Turpin, it's urgent. I've uh, put the sold out sign up, Mom. Hey, that's my boy. Look, dear. A lovely muffler. And guess who it's for? Oh, cool, Mom, for me. What would you like to know? You're so good to me, Mom. Sometimes when I think what life was like with Signor Pirelli, it, it seems like the good Lord sent you for me. It's just me warm heart, dear. Room enough for all God's creatures. You know, Mum, there's nothing I wouldn't do for you. If there was a monster or an ogre or anything bad like that was after you, I'd rip it apart with me bare fists, I would. What a sweet child it is. Oh, even if it was just A man. A man, dear? A man that was bad and, and might be luring you or unbeknownst into his evil deeds like. Uh, what is this? What are you talking about? Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. Of course not, dear. Why should it? Nothing's gonna harm you, no, sir. Not while I'm around. Uh, what do you mean, a man? D means all proudly in everywhere. Now a day. So they are, dear. I'll send them howling. I don't care. I got away. Of course you do. What a sweet, affectionate child it is. No one's gonna hurt you, no one's gonna dare. Others can desert you, not to worry, whistle, I'll be there. Dear, dear, have a nice bonbon. Demons will charm you with a smile for a while, but in time, nothing can harm you. 
not while I'm around. What is this foolishness? What are you talking about? Just things that I've been, well, thinking and wondering about. It's him, you see, Mr. Todd. I know you fancy him, but, but men ain't like women. They ain't what you can trust, as, as I've lived and learned. Not to worry, not to worry. I may not be smart, but I ain't dumb. I can do it, put me to it, show me something I can overcome. Not to worry, Mom. Being close and being clever ain't like being true. I don't need to, I will never hide a thing from you. Like some. Now, Toby, dear, haven't we had enough foolish chatter? Let's just sit nice and quiet for a bit. Here. That's Signor Pirelli's purse. Uh, what, what is that, dear? That, that proves it. What I've been thinking, that's his purse. Oh, no, it's just a little something, Mr. Todd. Oh, but Mr. Todd gave it to you. And how did he get it? How did he get it? He got it, dear. From the pawn shop, dear. Come on. Nothing's gonna harm you, not while I'm around. Nothing's gonna harm you, darling, not while I'm no, around. No, it was in Mr. Todd's parlour when the governor disappeared. Boys and their fancies, what will they think of next? Here, dear, sit nice and quiet. Look at your lovely muffler. How warm it's going to keep you when the day's drawn in. And it's so becoming on you. Demons will charm you with a smile for a while, but in time, nothing's gonna harm you. Not while I'm around. <laughs> now, Toby, dear. It's so strange you come in to chat with me now, of all moments, because as I was sitting here with my needles, I was thinking, what a good boy Toby is. So hardworking, so obedient. And I thought, you know how you'd always love coming to make the pies with me? Oh, yes, Mum. Well then, how about it? You mean it? You mean I can help make them and bake them? No time like the present. Come on, dear. <sighs> oh, cool. What a stink, ain't there? <laughs> Them steps go down to the old cellar, and the whiffs come up, love. God knows what's down there. So mouldy and dark. And there's always a few rats gone home to Jesus. Now, here's the oven. Oh, they're big enough, ain't they? <laughs> Hardly big enough for all the pies we sell. Ten dozen at a time. Oh, and always be sure to close the door properly like this. Oh, here's the grinder. You put the meat in here and it comes out there. And do you know what the secret is for keeping the pies so sweet and tender? Three times. You must put the meat through the grinder three times. Three times, eh? Go on. Smoothly. Smoothly. 
And as soon as we get a new batch in, we'll put you to work. Me making pies all on me own. Cool. <laughs> Where you going, Mum? Uh, back in a moment, dear. So wait, Polly Plunkett lay in the grass, turned her eyes heavenward, sighing. I am a loss who a loss loves a lad who a loss has a loss in Canterbury. Tis a road, oh, diddle do day, tis a road, oh, diddle do dee. Oh, Beadle Bamford, I didn't know you were a music lover too. Well, Mrs. Lovett, a fine instrument you've acquired. Oh, it's my pride and joy. Yes, now I hope you have a few moments, ma'am, for I'm here today on official business. Official? That's right, ma'am, you see, there have been complaints. Uh, complaints? About the stench from your chimney. They say at night it's something foul, and health regulations being my duty, I suppose I should take a look. Oh, the bake house. That's right, ma'am. Uh, but, but you see, it's locked, and I don't have a key. It's Mr. Todd upstairs. He's got the key, and he's not here right now. Well, when will he be back? Couldn't say, I'm sure. Oh, ah, one of my mother's favourites. Yes. If one bell rings in the Tower of Grey, ding dong, your true love will stay. Ding dong, one, one bell, bell today, today in the Tower of Grey. Ding, ding dong. dong. What was that? Whoa. It's just, just me, boy. The lad that helps me with the pies. Well, certainly he's in the bakehouse, isn't he? Y yes, he's in the bakehouse, of course. It. Uh, but, but, but you see, he's he's simple in the head. You know, just the other day he ran off, and we found him two days later, down by the embankment, half starved, poor thing. Ever since then, we lock him away for his own security. Well, I suppose we will have to wait for Mr. Todd, then, won't we? Yes, of course we have to wait for Mr. Todd. But you see, he's he's gone down to Wapping. And he won't be back for hours. He'll be ever so sorry to miss you. You know, just the other day he was saying, if only the beadle would grace my tonsorial parlour, I'd give him the nicest haircut, the daintiest shave, all for nothing. So why don't you come back another time and take advantage of his offer? Well, well that's really funny. What is this about the beadle? Oh, that's all Oh, look who's here. And some foolish complaint about the bakehouse or something. He asked for the key and I told him you had it. Yes, yes. But there's no hurry, is there? Why don't you take him upstairs and fix him up nice and pretty? <laughs> There'll be plenty of time for the bakehouse later. Well, uh... Tell me, Mr. Todd, do you pomade the hair? I dearly love a pomaded head. Pomade? Of course. And a nice facial rub with bay rum, too. All for free. Oh, well, bay rum. Go on. I am, sir, entirely at your disposal. <laughs> oh, let's hope he can do it quietly. I'll just provide a little musical send-off, just to be sure. <laughs> Sweet Polly Plunkett lay in the grass, turned her eyes heavenward, sighing. Huh. A hair? Black as a rook. Oh, now that ain't Mrs. Lovett, sir. Oh, well, some old cow, probably. <laughs> oh, cool! Bit of fingernail. <laughs> Clumsy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Mrs. Lovin, Mrs. Lovin, let me out! Oh, oh. It's done! Not yet it isn't. 
The boy he's guessed. Just what? About Pirelli. Since you weren't here, I locked him away in the bakehouse. And he's yelling to wake the dead. We've got to look after him. But the judges coming have arranged the it. The judge, you worry ah. about the bloody old judge at a time like this. Come on! The engine roared, the motor hissed. And you could see how the road would twist. In Sweeney's ledger, the entry smashed. A beetle arrived and a beetle dispatched. To satisfy the hungry god, a Sweeney Todd. The demon barber of Fleet Street. Sweeney, Sweeney. You do me honor, Mr. Fogg. I agree. It would be to our mutual interest if we can come to some arrangement in regard to my poor children's hair. Your children? <laughs> we are one happy family here, sir. All my patients are my children. To be corrected when not but to be rewarded with a sweetie when good. But to our business. Here's a charming yellow, a little dull in tone perhaps, but I'm sure you can restore it to its natural glee. And now here, a fine texture for a man. And as you well know, sir, there's always a discount on the hair of a man. She, she has the hair color I need. <sighs> Poor child needs so much correction. Singing all day and night, keeping all the other inmates so sleepless. Come, child, smile for the gentleman, and you shall get a sweetie. Now, where shall I cut? Anthony! Joanna! What is this? What is this? Stop, Mr. Fogger, I'll fire! Fire it, I will stop! I can't shoot! City on fire, rocks in the grass, and blue the chase sailing in the streets, it's the end of the world. Yes, city on fire, hunts rocks, fancy stories, and brown in the world, and shiny in the winds, watch out!
Mr. Todd! Mr. Todd! No one here! Where is this Mr. Todd? No matter, for I trust him as I trust my right arm. Now you wait here while I go hire a coach. But they're after us still. Oh, what if they trace us here? Please let me come with you. There's no safety for you on the streets. But dressed in these sailors' clothes, who's to know it is I? Why risk it? Ah, uh, miss. Look at me, look at me, miss, oh, look at me, please, oh, favor me, favor me with your glance. Ah, oh, miss, soon will be, soon will be gone and sailing the seas and happily, happily wed in France. And we'll sail the world and see its wonders from the pearls of Spain to the rubies of Tibet, and then come back to London someday. Now I'll be back before that smile is time to leave those lips.